It's time to do ultimate rankings for week 12 in fantasy football. If you enjoy the ultimate rankings, you know what to do. Make sure you drop a like. Make sure you subscribe. We really appreciate the love that you guys have shown to us throughout this entire season. Appreciate you more than you know. Let's get into entire. running back rankings for week 12, and let's start here. In the S tier, we'll start with Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley. Both these guys having pretty good Vegas lines this week. Supposed to be in games that will be pretty high scoring. Christian McCaffrey has the Packers. Saquon Barkley has the Rams. They both are fairly decent matchups there. Joe Mixon, uh, it's a lower scoring matchup, but Joe Mixon continues to get almost all the red zone work. It's why CJ Stroud has thrown for literally only 12 touchdowns this year. Uh, Derrick Henry has a tough matchup against the Chargers. Chargers have given up the second least amount of points to fantasy running backs, but it's Derrick Henry. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, Devon Achan and in about with the Patriots, he should have a really good game there as well. And then Jameer Gibbs playing the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, little secret about teams playing the Indianapolis Colts. They're probably going to score a lot of points in fantasy. Probably like probably if, some a lot. Yeah. Is this correct? They've given up the thirteenth least it, amount of points. It is uh, no thirteenth most amount of points. Maybe oh, thirteenth. No, most. it is thirteenth. Might most. be thirteenth. No, but either way, that's, <laughs> that's better than I thought. Yeah, it's not as bad as I don't know. Thirteenth <laughs> yeah, most is right after Brees dropping thirty on them. So they did that's lose true. a few spots. That's true. So yeah. Yeah, uh, top of the A tier. This is going to be a little baby tier here, but I think it's worthy of being a small tier. There's going to be a pretty big gap from A to B with all the bye weeks going on, uh, like six teams out this week. Kenneth Walker is going to be at the top playing Arizona. I know he hasn't been ultra productive recently, not super consistent, but we have hope against uh, the Arizona Cardinals for Kenneth Walker. I think he's going to have a solid week. Kyron Williams, same sort of story. Not been doing great the last few weeks, but we expect him to bounce back and be okay. Philadelphia is actually one of the better teams against the run but I mean it's basically do they want to let Kyron beat them or Puka and Cooper Cup I would assume after Cooper Cup and Puka dropped like 25 points apiece last last week that they're not going to allow that to happen again let's see if Kyron can get some more volume and opportunity in the red zone Josh Jacobs coming off of a phenomenal game uh, last week with a couple touchdowns playing San Fran this week uh, he's this is a neutral matchup he's going to be totally fine good matchup here for James Conner at the top of the beach this week playing the Seattle Seahawks we already talked about that matchup um, but it does project to be a pretty high-scoring game. Jonathan Taylor has a tough matchup. The Detroit Lions giving up the third least amount of points to running backs this year. And Jonathan Taylor has been a little bit hit or miss this year, mostly missed, to be honest with you, even though he has had some better games. David Montgomery, again, anytime you have a running back playing the Colts, you got to start that running back because they're probably going to destroy the Colts. And David Montgomery, as you saw last week, continues to get a lot of red zone carries and a lot of touchdowns to go with it. And then welcome back Isaiah Pacheco, who yeah, I'm sure you're here go. to see where he is. Uh, in case you're wondering, Nathan and I have him like 13 spots apart. And I have news flash. We're both starting Isaiah Pacheco regardless. It, honestly, like yeah. I, I'm worried that he'll be on a snap count and not have a super high ceiling, but they have a great match. But, they, but so. they play the Panthers. Panthers have given up the most points to running backs. So I honestly can just see them, him coming back and getting two touchdowns. Here <laughs> Let's this establish game. this here. You're starting Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah. That, that's, that is, that's what you're doing. That is true. It's just going to be who's more right about where he's ranked. I guess. For right. Days, yeah. I, yep. It'll yep. probably be me, though. Uh, no, Just go. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, B Rob, it will be depending on if he gets a touchdown or not. B Rob will be at the top of the seats here. Here, Aaron Rodgers or Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, wow. and J.K. Dobbins. Aaron Rodgers is transitioning to a running back. Um, yeah. I thought it was going to be AR, but it actually Rodgers decided to do it instead. Yeah. Um, but with Aaron Jones playing the Bears, uh, he's he has not been ultra productive. I think he'll be okay against Chicago. B Rob, you know, is going to be very consistent. Get plenty of red zone opportunity. He'll be touchdown. Uh, uh, 17 points, no touchdown, <laughs> 10 to 12 points. Uh, J.K. Dobbins had a great game last week. He's got a tougher matchup against the Ravens. Yeah. Tyron Tracy and Chuba Hubbard, you can make an argument to have Chuba specifically a little bit higher. A, he has a tough matchup against Kansas City. B, Jonathan Brooks is now in the equation there. How much is Jonathan Brooks actually going to get work in his first game back off of an ACL tear? Probably not a ridiculous amount. This really is more based off of the matchup. We do not trust the Carolina Panthers playing the Chiefs defense this week. Ramondre Stevenson I think he'll be alright against Miami. This could be one of the better weeks for him production wise. He's more boom bust. And then DeAndre Swift even though he had a solid game last week bouncing back from a, a, a poor producing game the, the previous week uh, he's got a tough one against Minnesota. They have allowed the second least amount of points to running backs this season. And a couple tough matchups at the top of this D tier as well. Tony Pollard playing the Texans giving up the fifth least points two running backs this year. Rashad White playing the Giants. The Giants have been middle of the road but it's supposed to be a low scoring game. Najee Harris against the Browns. This is the lowest uh, Vegas total points of the week at 35 and a half. So it's going to be touchdown or bust for Najee, in my opinion. 
Bucky Irving playing the Giants. Again, same tier as Rashad White here. We're going to continue to rank on the same team. They've been pretty comparable production-wise this season. Uh, Javante Williams playing the Raiders this week is a good matchup, and it also looks like they're probably going to give him... Uh, it looks... I, I don't know. Yeah, I, we're going to rank him above Estime this week, and maybe is going to get all the carries, and next week we're going to rank Estime above Javante Williams. I, maybe they were just trying to teach me a lesson. I don't know. I guess we'll rank him. I, I, we, here's the don't thing. Freaking you don't feel great about starting them, so like yeah. I typically lean other guys in this range over those guys just because I don't want to trip over one of Javante or Audrey. Let's Kessler. be honest, though. This week, you're probably going to be forced to start every single one of these guys in this tier because six teams are on by. That is fair. I, I mean, we're, we're barely out of the top 24 at the end of this tier. So yes, that is um, fair. at the F tier, we're starting with Rico Dowdle, who has really come back to earth. He's getting seven, eight points a game. He, he's He's streamable at, at best uh, if you're if you got a last minute desperate flex option maybe Rico can get a touchdown against Washington good matchup again for Kareem Hunt playing Carolina this will definitely be the thing that everyone's going to want to follow this week uh, I clearly you're seeing demonstrated in our rankings that we believe Kareem Hunt is going to get significantly less work and that Isaiah Pacheco is going to get a majority of the work in that offense right out of breaking his leg so um that's just a shot that we're calling and a matchup that's kind of made for the running backs um kareem hunt has a chance to be productive if he gets like half of the opportunity there again it's anyone's guess what that split is going to look like in pacheco's first game back we shall see nick chubb getting volume was the most efficient he's ever been uh this last week but he's just not getting on the field consistently enough for us to be comfortable with ranking him any higher jalen warren is constantly in the shadow of Najee Harris and the amount of workload that he gets on a weekly basis. Warren is really just almost completely dependent on his receiving work. Um, and then Madison, Ty J Spears, and SMA kind of being at the tail end of this tier. Uh, that if they get a touchdown, they're productive. If they don't, they don't do anything. Audric SMA, again, we already mentioned Javante and his bounce back after getting no opportunity the week before. Don't know what, what SMA's outlook is going to be rest of the season, honestly. This is really tough. This week, I don't think it's going to be super friendly for him. Uh, I would assume Javante is going to continue to get work there. And then Brooks, we will acknowledge him, have him at the tail end of this tier. He is honestly one of the last running backs that I'm looking to start this week comfortably. Let's wait and see how he operates in that offense and how his workload increases over the next three to four weeks. Let's jump over to wide receivers now. We'll start in the S tier. Amon Ra coming off of a 40-point game in fantasy. Thank God. Goodness, we yeah. finally saw him get a high target volume. We finally saw him get. I mean, it also against the Jags. It also was yes. It, it also was the fact that they were up like fifty points, and Dan Campbell was like, "Send the first team out there." <laughs> like, I mean, he's the wide receiver two on the season now because of that. <laughs> like, I mean, they were legitimately up fifty points with Amon Ross St. Brown oh in the game. Gosh. Eleven of 11, 161 yards, two touchdowns. Love to see it. Just had to uh, put that out there because you know he's on my flock team. But uh, gave me the dub last week. AJ Brown playing the Rams is also a good matchup. Rams giving up the tenth most points to wide receivers this year. Justin Jefferson. Had has a tough matchup against the Bears. He's had a tough go of it, honestly, recently. Uh, we'll, we'll expect a bounce back from Justin Jefferson. You can't not start him. You can't not put him in the S tier. Nico against the Titans. Tough matchup. You've seen the Titans. Pretty good. They were good against Jefferson last week. But uh, Nico is still getting his feet under him. He's still going to be getting back in the swing of things after coming back from his injury. And I do expect him to be, you know, have extremely high upside when he does. And then Puka Nakua. Again, when Puka's been on the field, when he's been healthy, Puka has been quite freaking good. Uh, 25, 18, and 18 points in the three games he played more than 50% of snaps this year. That's um, good. So I, I don't think you can rank Puka anywhere lower than this. I think rest of the season you have to put him here as well. Yep, Terry McLaurin at the top of the A tier. He's kind of just moving up by default because he's very consistent. And again, the buys are killing everyone this week. George Pickens, uh, honestly, it, he has a great situation this week against Cleveland in that secondary. If he goes nuts again, he might find himself consistently in the top six to 10 every single week because I mean, he's where he's been finishing he, on a weekly basis. He's, he's a wide receiver one right now in the season. He's, Oh no, he's not. He's a wide receiver two. But when you're looking at the last four weeks specifically since Russ came in, he is a wide receiver one in that span. So yes. I will say about Terry, um, he obviously only had two points last game. I'm not super we're worried, not about, worried that. about that. Um, yeah, we're going to continue to rank him high. He, he I, it was weird. He was only on the field for 70% of snaps. Only got two targets, but yeah, um, in the, against the Eagles. But I mean, it was, uh, Quinion that shut him down, right? I mean, that's yep. It was, it was good, good defense. So yeah, it was more their scheme. Uh, it just was yeah. not really built for Terry's big playability in that offense with Jaden Daniels taking shots downfield. So yes. tough one against Philadelphia. They're going to bounce back against Dallas. Zay yeah. Flowers, I think, is going to bounce back against the Chargers as well, who have a good overall defense, but they're pretty neutral in terms of the amount of production they allow to wide receivers. I think <laughs> Lamar Jackson's going to be 
coming into this game ticked off that he just lost to their division rival in Pittsburgh, who is the leader in that division, which is crazy. But they look really solid. Um, the, the the Ravens, I think, are going to be fine. I think Zay Flowers is going to be fine. He had 11 points, salvaged his day against Pittsburgh with a last-second touchdown, literally a last-minute touchdown. Um, I, I think he'll be uh, all right against the Chargers, and then he's got Philly after that. He's kind of kind of kind of got a tough rest of the season outlook, but um, he'll he'll be all right this week. Tyreek Hill and C.D. Lamb will be at the end of this tier. Tyreek Hill, super thrilled that he finally showed signs of life. Now he's playing the Patriots. I think he's going to have another solid week. C.D. Lamb also showed signs of life with Cooper Rush. Had like 10 targets again, 18, 19 points. Again, he's not going to have a ridiculous ceiling or anything. That's why he's at the tail end of this A tier and not S tier. Um, but he probably is still going to be consistent because he's legitimately the only threat on that offense, period. Well, let's go down to the B2 here. We'll talk about Mike Evans. Welcome back, Mike Evans. The LSU practicing earlier this week. We do expect yes. him to play against the New York Giants. And again, he is going to be the primary option objectively uh, in that offense. And then you got Marvin Harrison Jr. playing the Seahawks. Should be a higher scoring game in Seahawks, giving up top 12 uh, points to wide receivers this year. DK Metcalf playing the Cardinals. Same matchup there. We like both wide receivers, uh, both alpha both wide receiver in, in those games. Both. Uh, Malik Neighbors playing the Bucks. We'll see how he does with with, with Mr. Italian Stallion, and that is Tommy DeVito. Uh, we'll see. Tommy DeVito could just be um, a, a gangster or, or a mob boss or something like that. Mm. But you know how he does affect Malik Neighbors is going to is, is yet to be seen. We'll rank him as a high end wide receiver too, just because we know what he's capable of, and he's probably he probably is going to get a ton of targets. Uh, and then Cooper Cup. Playing the Philadelphia Eagles, again, going against the Philadelphia Eagles defense that has been very good this year, actually. Um, it, this has ended up being a tough matchup for guys. And so I, I do think that Cooper Cup, though, and, and Puka Nakua, uh, you can't not rank them here. Even though we rank Kyron high, I just feel like they're going to get their own no matter what. It doesn't really matter how good the defense is. Matt Stafford, Puka Nakua, and Cooper Cup can just, uh, they, they can just slash people apart. And they do every single week. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think these are all three of these guys, Kyron, Cup, Puka, all guys are starting no matter what this yep. week. Time to give Cortland Sutton his flowers, man. He's going to be in this range probably rest of the season until he proves otherwise. He has shown a month straight of solid production. Nothing elite, nothing insane, but consistent, reliable, and you love what you're seeing. 17, 23, 19, and 14 points over the last month. 11, 10, 9, and 8 targets. That is consistent. That's sustainable. Only one touchdown in that stretch, so you're not relying on him getting touchdowns every single week to be productive. This is the definition of reliable and sustainable for the rest of the season, and it's directly tied to Bo Nix really figuring it out at the NFL level. The last three weeks, Bo Nix is, last four weeks, Bo Nix has thrown for seven touchdowns, only one interception, and he mm. is throwing the ball well over 30 times a game. This is this is elite level volume opportunity for the wide receivers in that offense. Cortland Sutton is by default the number one guy there, and he is a pretty solid wide receiver, veteran, experienced in the NFL. Uh, I just we haven't talked about him much. I wanted to spend a little more time on him this week because we we do need to give him the respect he deserves in in the D tier here at 16 overall at the wide receiver position. Josh Downs is going to be right behind him. He had a nice productive game with Anthony Richardson at quarterback. It took a touchdown. Uh, for him to get 20 points but again playing the Detroit Lions who have allowed the eighth most points to wide receivers on the season that's pretty encouraging for Josh Downs who uh, seems to be the true fantasy wide receiver one in the Colts offense with Michael Pittman really being banged up and just not having the upside that Downs has demonstrated. Debo Samuel is going to be in this tier and be even lower every single week until he can finally produce. He has not done well uh, this season, not been consistent really since he got banged up uh, in the first third of the year. JSN, some people are going to hate us for having JSN this low. They're playing the Cardinals, a neutral matchup. DK Metcalf, we're still betting on DK being the more consistent guy. JSN has shown two straight weeks of being consistent and productive. Tyler Lockett definitely kind of on, on, on the down. Uh, downward trend here but with JSN let's just see it for one more week and then he'll continue to move up our rankings as well Jaden Reed has just not been consistent but he's got San Fran this week and they've allowed a decent amount of production to wide receivers and fantasy assets overall we'll see if he can bounce back to an, an inconsistent stretch here in the middle of the year we'll have Calvin Ridley here against uh, the Houston Texans this weekend the Houston Texans have given up a lot 
of points to wide receivers. It's a pretty good matchup. He's a wide receiver three on the season, so we're going to keep him here, uh, you know, in, in the mid wide receiver two range when he does have a good matchup. Uh, when you're looking at the rest of this tier here, Lad McConkey has the Ravens. Lad McConkey's the wide receiver 18, and the Ravens have given up the most points to wide receivers this year. He's a must start. Uh, Juwan Jennings playing the Packers. Obviously, Juwan Jennings went off. I think he's a must start from now on. Jameson Williams, really good matchup against the Colts. I bet you he gets a really long touchdown. The worst matchup in this tier is going to be Cedric Tillman playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, the Steelers, obviously, this, this line is 36 and a half points. Not great at all. Uh, Tillman, after having three straight weeks of pr production, really didn't produce a whole lot last week. You saw Jerry Judy take some of that production and David Njoku, honestly, who we're going to move up our rankings quite a bit. But with Tillman, I still think, you know, again, you have to start him at least one more week until he shows you that you can't start him anymore, which I don't think we're at that point yet. So you think he's a, you know, wide receiver two option this week. Yep. Then we got D hop at the top of the G tier. He's fallen back down our rankings. We were conservative with him a couple weeks ago after he came off that multi-touchdown game with Kansas City. That has really reigned true. He's still got to figure it out a little bit. Hopefully he can in a matchup that's very friendly against the Panthers. Devonta Smith has, uh, I mean, let's be honest. He's he's not been consistent, and he's not been producing at a high enough level the last two weeks, three and six points. He had 18 and 20 before that um, when A.J. Brown was kind of banged up, zero before that, 15 before that. And then he had a good stretch at the beginning of the year, but we're so far removed from that. After the bye week, he has is, he is not really been that great and not been commanding a lot of target volume. Four, two, seven, six, three, and six targets. So he is touchdown or bust right now by definition. Uh, he's going to be in this range until he proves otherwise. And then the next guy that we've got here is going to be DJ Moore coming off of a seven target 13 point game hopefully he can follow that up with a solid performance against the Vi against the Vikings who have allowed the third most uh, fantasy production to wide receivers this year they're really good against the run not great against uh, wide receivers at all Jacoby Myers tougher matchup against Denver they actually have allowed the least amount of production to wide receivers so that's another another knock on Jacoby this week going to be tough for him we still like him overall but uh, probably going to be a rough week for him where Bowers is going to be ridiculous again and then tank dell playing tennessee tough matchup again tough matchups for these last two guys in this tier but they're in situations where they can get some volume and, and opportunity uh given given the right situation last year here xavier leggett playing in the chiefs is a fine matchup for him but he continues to be a little bit uh touchdown dependent there rashad bateman has been surprisingly good this season playing the chargers it's a tough matchup for him um you did see the chargers they were um one of the worst matchups going into last week and this week they've dropped significantly simply because you had jamar chase and T. Higgins completely eviscerate them. So it can be done. Um, and it can be done, especially on deep targets. And Rashad Bateman's seen a lot of those this season. So I think he's somebody that you want to start. Jalen Waddle playing the Patriots. You don't really want to start Jalen Waddle, but you have to this week. Jerry Judy, you don't want to start him against the Steelers, but you kind of have to this week. Uh, Romeo Dubs, again, you're going to start him for the upside that he has. is going to be touchdowns mainly. Demario Douglas, you've seen him get 10 points a couple times uh, with Drake May at the helm. We'll, we'll see We'll see if that continues, but the Miami Dolphins have been very good against wide receivers this year. Quentin Johnson playing the Ravens. a really good matchup for QJ. And honestly, he's getting, you know, consistent targets they're all deep targets right and so you're not seeing a ton of target volume but you see him being targeted a lot he had eight targets in his last game that's about what i thought he only had 12 points and it's because he had a touchdown he caught two of those but again he's literally getting three it, straight he, touchdowns he's literally the last three weeks he's literally getting back shoulder throws from herbert five to eight times a game right now that, that's what's happening so um I, I do think you start him for the touchdown upside jordan addison he had a touchdown last week but it's a tough matchup for him michael Pittman, uh, i think he had uh, he had like 10 points 10 points yeah, yeah. so who knows? I mean, you probably got to flex him this week. I think I'm flexing him in a league. And then Rome. Rome actually had 11 targets uh, this week, I think, and last week, if I'm not mistaken. So he's looked really good. He's looked good, and he's also continued to get um, the, the target volume. I mean, he had 10 targets. My bad. He didn't have 11 targets before. I'm thinking of somebody else. Maybe it was in Joku I'm thinking of. But um, he, he definitely uh, is somebody that has looked a little bit better. And like I said, you do have to keep in mind that uh, he is – playing with a different offensive coordinator now and it could be a completely different situation there for Romo Dunze so yep. uh, we'll keep an eye on that but let's jump over now let's do tight ends uh Brock Bowers George Kittle in the S tier two of the best tight ends this season the tight end one tight end two obviously Brock Bowers is the tight end one in our rankings and in my brain in my heart in my mind in my soul in my strength so um I'm, I'm I, <laughs> whoa there <laughs> yeah no I know but I that's I feel very strongly about my boy Brock he saved me last week with a 30 point game Kittle's you know he's good too 
So it's slightly. Yeah. Well, he didn't play, so he wasn't good last <laughs> yeah, week. Right. He was on bye. Yeah. No. That's that's a big knock on George Kittle. No, right, I mean, no I, he actually he was hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the big knock on him. <laughs> Travis Kelsey is at the top of the A tier playing Carolina. I think he'll be fine after a, a tough week against Buffalo. Uh, Trey McBride, TJ Hawkinson. Not much to say about these guys. Hot coming off of a slower week. That offense was slow overall. Not really worried about it. McBride coming off the bye. He's gonna be he's gonna be good. David Njoku continues to get consistent volume in that offense with Jameis Winston along with every other wide receiver in that offense as well. So he he's going to have a solid week, I think, against Pittsburgh while those receivers are kind of, eh, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll see what they're able to do. But I, I think Njoku's going to have a good week. Uh, starting with Dallas Goddard here in the B tier as the Rams is a good matchup for him. Really good. I would start him this week. Kate Odd, I feel like you have to rank him here just based on what he's done this season. But Believe it or not, fun fact of all teams this year, the New York Giants have been the number one team against tight ends this year. So uh, that could be fluky, but it is Kate Otten's first game with Mike Evans back, so we'll keep an eye on that. Mark Andrews continues to uh, he continues to produce at least a little bit. I think he's a starting option now. Will Disley, hot waiver pickup last week at 18 points. So yep. uh, he's playing the Ravens this week. It's a good matchup. And then Sam Laporta against the Colts. I feel like you've got to give Laporta a go this week as well. Yep. And then the last two tiers here, I'll knock him out. Hunter Henry uh, has been pretty consistent. Zach Gertz coming off an 18-point game. He's actually the tight end seven on the season he's really uh just in a great situation for tight ends right now in that offense alongside Jaden daniels who's providing plenty of volume for him the last four weeks he had a one target game against the giants which is kind of a fluke but the other three games 11 8 and seven targets he's been getting some touchdowns here and there as well actually only two touchdowns on the year so he's not really dependent on that again tight end seven uh regardless of uh, or despite only having two touchdowns on the year so he's been solid john U. smith went nuts last week i, I mean what position Position, where where does he rank now after that game? A 28-point game. He's the tight end eight directly behind Zach Ertz on the year. He's getting consistent volume, dude. Since week five, eight, seven, six, six, four, and eight targets. I mean, you have to start this guy every single week now. Yeah, you do. Which is crazy. Uh, Tucker Craft, you do not have to start every single week. He continues to move down our rankings. He is the top option for Jordan Love, though, at the tight end position. In the D tier, Ferguson, he might not even play this week. He has a, con a concussion. Yeah, concussion. Pat Fryermuth will also be in this tier, and then JT Sanders and Dalton Schultz. Not much to say about any of these guys. They're streamable at best. You don't love starting them. Quarterbacks, S tier, two words, rushing, Upside, Jackson, Hurts, Daniels, and Kyler Murray. All four of these guys have pretty good matchups this week. Yeah. Logos Vegas line comes in uh, the Commanders game playing the Cowboys, but that is the best matchup of the week. They've given up the fifth most points to wide or to quarterbacks this year. So I think, again, rushing upside, two words, right? Even though it cost me 20 points last week starting Jaden Daniels over Jared Goff, but Rip. rushing upside, right? Yeah. Jared Goff will be at the top of this tier. We're being aggressive with him, even though he's a pocket passer. Playing the Colts after he dropped 32 points against the Jacksonville Jaguars defense. The Colts are not that far behind in terms of what they allow for uh, it, talented offenses like what the Detroit Lions have. I think they're going to go crazy, and Jared Goff's going to reap the benefits there. Uh, Justin Herbert and Bo Nix will also be in this tier. They both have phenomenal matchups, some of the best matchups in the league. Herbert playing the Ravens. Uh, that secondary is broken. Um, they I, I think Herbert's going to go wild. Bo Nix not only shows that he can be effective in the passing game and provides plenty of volume, but he's also effective in the running game as well, playing the Raiders. He's going to have a solid week. Baker Mayfield, oh so consistent, playing the Giants, not worried about that matchup at all. And then Patrick Mahomes will also be in this tier. Uh, he has not been in the A tier in a while for us, but playing the Panthers, I think you have to give him his respect this week. He's going to be fine and going to have a solid game. Brock Purdy has a tougher matchup against Green Bay, but Brock Purdy has been one of the more consistent quarterbacks in the NFL this season in terms of fantasy production. Uh, one of his worst games against Seattle only had a touchdown um, in the air. He had a touchdown on the ground, though, to compensate, plus 40 rushing yards as well. 19 points against Seattle in, again, one of his tougher games of the season. I, I mean, this is a dude that he had three interceptions against Kansas City week seven and he still court, still scored 20 points because he's, he's a baller yeah he's QB8 on the year and still has had his bye week um, all, already so uh, this is a situation that I love for Purdy I, I'm not worried about the matchup at all uh, let's do the B tier and the C tier here Tua, Jordan Love, Anthony Richardson all three guys with upside that have bottom 12 matchups this week really bottom 10 matchups this week um, all, all guys really Anthony Richardson is going to be the one that's probably in the highest scoring game and he does have the most rushing ups out of these guys uh, but he is Anthony Richardson so you have to keep that in mind uh, Matt Stafford, CJ Stroud 
Stroud, Drake May, and Geno Smith. Uh, two tough matchups here. Matt Stafford uh, against the Eagles, third least amount of points to quarterbacks this year. And then Drake May against the Miami Dolphins, the second least amount of points to quarterbacks this year. Stroud, he just doesn't produce from a fantasy perspective. And then Geno Smith, uh, I actually, you know, honestly, I haven't even looked at what his ranking. He's still the QB 11. Yeah, he does have the occasional twenty-five point game like you saw before the bye week, sixteen points last week. But this Arizona salvaged game salvaged by be, that last second touchdown. <laughs> yes, th- this uh, Arizona game should be pretty high scoring, so he could be a streamable option this week. Yeah, I definitely could. Russell Wilson will be at the top of the D's here, along with Jameis Winston and Sam Darnold. They will all every single one of these guys will be boom bust. They have a decent amount of volume that they provide in the passing game. Just depends on if they're going to throw a ton of picks not throw very many touchdowns or, or what's going to happen with those matchups. Each of them are, are kind of tough, especially Jameis playing Pittsburgh and Sam Darnold playing Chicago. Not a lot of production allowed. They're actually the last and second to last <laughs> amount of production for quarterbacks between Chicago and Pittsburgh. And then the FTR close it out. Caleb Williams, Will Levis are the only guys I'm even thinking about starting this week in this tier. Tommy DeVito, don't even think about it. Bryce Young, I'm not really considering it. Cooper Rush and Gardner Minshew at the tail end of this tier as well. Uh, you, you're really, really hurting at the quarterback position if you have to start these guys. So there you go. Ultimate rankings for week 12. Like I said, guys, show some love, drop a like, make sure you're subscribed to play fantasy. We really appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you later. Thank you.